here today to bring you more of your FM24 tactics. And today, they get a little bit fruity. Can a grown man say fruity? Not sure. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to bring you some more FM24 tactics created and submitted by you guys. Starting with this monstrosity here. This is the 4132 zigzag tactic created by beyond thank you beyond for submitting this tactic i say thank you i'm i'm worried it's an absolute eyesore but i'm kind of digging it in a weird sort of way we're going to look at this one as well as some other ones in today's video and see what's working out there for you guys in your saves then i'm going to upload them in a little link down below today's video in the pinned comment so that if you want to go and download them you can do so and enjoy them in your saves starting then as i mentioned with this monstrosity here. So looking at this tactic here then, we can see that it is a back four. It's also got resting goal, who's maybe my favorite young goalkeeper on FM24 so far. I actually had him all lined up to save in our Newcastle save, and then uh, it fell apart because I'd already signed too many under 21 players, which was thoroughly depressing. It's Fresneda right back, a doggy at left back, great fullbacks, great young fullbacks. Marmo and Anderson at centre back, Van der Beek as a regista in behind a Metzala and a De and Decore in as a DLP on defend. I actually really like this midfield as well. Van der Beek's a weird one as a regista, but Baldanzo's amazing. And then they've got Gabri Vega in at attacking midfield with Xerxes and Garassi. Two pretty good strikers there as well. Xerxes, always good in FM. Seems really good this year. It's a it's 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 a thing, this tactic, definitely. Let's have a look at what Beyond has got to say about it. How would he describe this tactic? He says. I've been using a 4-1-2-1-2 asymmetric tactic, which is then gone on to call a 4-1-3-2, but I guess both could be applied here, right? With Nottingham Forest currently, that's been working well. The reason it's been so good is the midfield can outnumber most teams due to the four of them in the midfield, making it easier to progress the ball into the final third with some quick passing patterns and one-twos to progress into the final third and create chances to score. Spoken like a pure Twitter tactico there, which really does wind me up. But I, I get what you're saying. I understand. Actually, it kind of makes sense. With this four in midfield, I can see what's happening. Let's have a look at some of the results that you've managed to have here. You've got a season overview, which shows that you finished eighth in the Premier League with Forest. That's not no mean feat, I don't think. I think that's pretty, that's actually very respectable. Just outside the European places, Chelsea in seventh. Liverpool finished sixth, which is just disappointing. I can see actually on here as well, top goal scorer for you was Serhu Garassi with 29 goals. So you're definitely free scoring. Goal difference of 18, it's definitely positive. Def oh, it's actually a lot better than most of the teams just below you. Brentford in ninth look of a negative two goal difference, whereas you've got that 18 plus 18. It's pretty good. Knocked out in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Knocked out in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup by Man City, which is a bit unlucky. Overall, I think it's a very respectable season. It's a quite realistic one as well. I know we saw in the last video we had people winning the quadruple with Bournemouth and some people calling it out. I, I trust it, by the way. I, I know the person very well and I trust it. There's no saves, saves coming there, I'm going to say. Let's load it into my Newcastle save here then, which may give some spoilers about how we're doing in the league, by the way. But just ignore it. It's fine. Here it is. I have put in, I've, I've loaded in the tactic, this mess of a tactic, which, I mean, it hurts your eyes at first sight, but then I quite like it afterwards. And I've also then got the assistant to pick the best 11. So I would have my goalkeeper, the back four here, which is pretty standard. A wing back on either side with ball playing defenders in the middle. Nothing crazy there. I guess it's not that crazy. If you made it like a narrow diamond, it's kind of a narrow diamond that's just offset, isn't it? You'd have a Regista, a Metzala, and a DLP on defend. Fine. You've got kind of two playmakers in there with the DLP and then the Regista, but in slightly different ways. Interesting that the DLP is set to defend, but the Regista is set to support. So you might have some weird things going on there, but the way that the positional play and the way that they interact with one another in the midfield is kind of fun this year. So I wonder what this looks like in game. An attacking midfielder who's just offset to the right-hand side with two advanced forwards, which I quite like, two advanced forwards. Three advanced forwards kind of breaks everything, which is great. Positive mentality. Let's have a look in possession. We've got fairly wide. Pass into space, play out of defence, fine. Pass and directness is play shorter passes, work the ball into the box, and a slightly higher tempo. Nothing crazy in there, I don't think. In transition, lots going on here, but again, nothing crazy, just not distributing it to the to, well, we're playing it short, really, is what this is saying, isn't it? Not playing it long to those forward players. 
distributing quickly from the keeper as well, taking those short kicks, as I mentioned. Out of possession, a high line of engagement, well, a high press line, line of engagement, then a standard defensive line. I think we're seeing a lot more deeper defensive lines than we may have seen in the past. I think this is maybe the trend for last year as well, but there was a time where if you weren't playing a high line and really gag and pressing, then you were kind of letting yourself, you weren't doing as well as you possibly could. This, I'm glad to see that that has changed. I love how this looks like a weird two as well on this graphic here, which is fun. Step up more, even though it's a standard defensive line, I guess that's okay. And overall, I think it's an interesting one. Thank you to Beyond for submitting it. If you want to download it, it will be pinned in the top comment below this video. Go and try out the zigzag. See if you can get some results. See if you can go and win some leagues with it. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have this 4231 submitted by Casual. Kyle, thank you very much for submitting this tactic. I appreciate it. Back to a 4231. We had a lot of these in the first video, if you remember. We had 433s and 4231s were seemingly the meta once again. This one. It kind of goes back to that again, which we've got a 4-2-3-1 gag and press, haven't we? It is then using, let's have a look at the uh, the description of this one from Casual. It is York City FC, so lower league here, which is a little bit more interesting. They are in the Vanarama National League, I think, to start things off. And he says, lots of high scoring games with five, six, seven plus goals, which is fun. Beating teams multiple leagues above us in cup games, which does happen sometimes when you do those lower league saves. You see... You can either trounce a league, but then you find out how good you are when you play those teams in leagues above, which happened with me a lot in the Worcester save back last year. He says it is high pressing, forward thinking football, which can sometimes cause counterattacks, making the risk and reward thrilling, which is fun. I like the idea of thinking about how attacking you are and how fun it is when teams counterattack you and enjoying that, which is good. Depot Akinyemi got 43 games, 35 goals, which is always very, very good. The team has massively overachieved in the first season, was predicted ninth in the Vanarama National, but finished second, got promoted. And then in League Two, predicted 11th and finished third. So back to back promotions, definitely then a tactic that is working. If we have a look at the results here, look, it's what I'm usually going to say with this, isn't it? There's a lot of green, particularly later on in the season. So this is the League 2 campaign. There is a really rough patch there in September where, I mean, if you actually have a look at September as a month, there is four losses and two wins in there, one of them being in the cup. So it's not, it definitely struggled at one point. But then after that, if you look from about October downwards, there's no losses there. There's a couple of draws, but there's wins like 6-1, 4-1, 5-0. As we talked about, those high scoring games. It definitely, maybe when you get into a groove, maybe if you can get a consistent 11 playing with this tactic, it works out quite nicely. Let me load it into my game here with Newcastle. And again, I think that 4 2 one fits with Newcastle quite nicely. So I'm imagining we can make a pretty good looking team with it. If I get the assistant to best, pick the best 11 here, look. Here is what my assistant would go with. It would be the goalkeeper, the back four, attacking wing backs is fun, a ball winner midfielder and a deep lying playmaker. Fairly standard with an advanced playmaker in front. So two playmakers in there. Do not hate it at all. Sometimes I use no playmakers and it's great. And sometimes I use two or three, which it also seems to work. Don't be weird about it. And you know, I've definitely read people saying you can't have more than one playmaker. You can. And you can even have it without a playmaker. It's, you know, it's all about where your play is being made from. If you have wingbacks, maybe it comes from there, etc. Two inside forwards, one on support, one on, on attack. And then an advanced forward up front seems to be the most popular role i think for a striker doesn't it mentality of uh, positive it seems to be a custom type of gag and press let's have a look at those instructions here overlaps on both sides playing out of defense really high tempo on this one really getting the ball and working it quickly work the ball into the box in transition we've got the counter and the counter press taking the short kicks distributing to the center backs and out of possession wow it's a low block line of engagement that's funky and weird and Seemingly effective, so really low, low block line of engagement, but a higher defensive line. Seems like a mishmash that shouldn't really work, but kind of, I mean, we're seeing the proof of the pudding is in the eating, aren't we? It seems to work. So let's, um, let's let you guys have a play with it by downloading it if you want to in the link down below in the comments. And let's move through to our third tactic. And that tactic is this funky looking thing. From Linus. Thank you, Linus, for submitting this one. A 4 triple 2 tactic with a back four with complete wing backs. One of them a little bit lopsided as well here. You can straight away see with an inverted wing back on the right, complete wing back on the left. Dorgu 
seems to be the real the real main man of this team. 20 assists I'm already seeing from the left wing back there. A left back's back and being really powerful. They were one year, weren't they? We made a video about it. And then in front of that is where it gets a little bit strange. An anchor and a Segundo Volante. A shadow striker to the right in front of that with an attacking midfield to the left. Jonas Wind as a DLF and then Martin Terrier as an advanced forward. It's called an overload box, which I quite like that as a name as well. We have had tactics of our own called the overload, if you remember. And I'm seeing the goals and the assists and things on the here. This seems to be great. Playing with Ren in Liga 1. I want to have a look at some of these results. But before that, let's see how, how Linus explains this tactic. He says... It works by completely overloading the box, with the front four and Segundo Valente routinely playing in and around the box where they make the use of the positional play to make endless runs behind the defence. So it's a front four with the Segundo Valente pushing forward too, so having five players all intertwining and working together making runs sounds really fun and definitely it's an overload, isn't it, that's being created this is supported by the complete wing back on attack on the left hand side, Dorgu, who averages about an assist per 90 minutes in the league and an average rating of about 7.6. Outrageous. By crossing it into the overloaded box, his stats are unreal in general. And he actually did include a link to Dorgu here. And if we have a look at his profile, he looks, yeah, I mean, he looks fairly, I mean, he looks good as a left back, but doesn't look like somebody that should be breaking the engine and getting 20 assists in a season. But I suppose all of the ingredients are there, like a young Danish left back, Patrick Dorgu. Maybe you should go and sign him on your saves. Maybe he's a bargain you should be looking for. Though his value is up at 51 million here, but he's had a couple of really good seasons, hasn't he? The inverted wing back and anchor provides support to recycle the ball in and out of the box without having to involve the two central defenders, currently outscoring PSG by a wide margin or somehow having a solidish defence both in the league and the Champions League. Puts a massive workload on the backs who rarely play a full game necessitating starter level backup. So needing to squad build around having a tactic that is a little bit weird and funky like this one. I like it. I'm enjoying it as a concept. I want to load it into my save and have a proper look at this one here. So let's do that. In fact, before we do that, can we see how he's done in, in the league there? We know he finished second. I want to see that league table. And there it is. Look, 24 games in, in this current season. They're a point behind PSG and it's very difficult to beat PSG who... I've lost four games but haven't drawn a game all season their form looks pretty scary there look but yeah outscoring 82 goals in four, 24 games from Ren here that's always fun isn't it I want to see those results do we have a, a list of the results yeah so here are some of the results here I want to see how has he done against PSG it's the next game conveniently the next game is PSG although I'm looking back he beat PSG 5-1 at the home was that the home game I'm trying to, yeah, Rosian Park must be his home stadium. Home game against PSG, a 5-1 win. Okay, so fair play. I was going to say he's conveniently cut it off before he plays PSG, but you know what? He's, he's also got a 5-1 win in there, which is quite the flex. There's also, look at the results. 6-1, 6-1, 6-2, 5-3, 4-1. This is a goal-scoring tactic for sure from Linus. I'm going to load it into my game now so we can have a little look at it. And, uh... I'm, I'm intrigued. Maybe I'll leave it loaded in. This one looks like a really fun one. Okay, and here we see it then. Let me pick my best 11 with it, which would then put Tony and Isaac up front, Almiron Anderson in behind, this anchor in here, this Volante. It would be, for me, although you can't quite see it on there, why it doesn't load his name in, it's Livramento who would be this complete wing back and hopefully getting all of the assists from left back. Now, I feel like we've described the, the tactic quite a lot. It's actually not dissimilar from Beyond's earlier, just slightly less zigzaggy. Maybe this, I mean, maybe the overloads that you can create with the positional play and the runs that the midfielders make, maybe that's a way that works in this year's engine. I'm not sure. I haven't experimented it enough to really know. There's actually not many instructions on this tactic at all. And obviously something we haven't looked at in these in these videos is the player instructions. There may well be specific player instructions on some of these players in the tactic. Download the tactic yourself and have a look at those things. I'm not going to go into that much detail because it would take forever, but just bear that in mind as well, that maybe some of the, the effectiveness of these is because of those player instructions. Not many team instructions on here, fairly wide, despite having just those, just really one wide player in the team in this left wing back, the complete wing back, but focusing the play through the middle seems to kind of go against each other. But I guess, you know, it's these players staying wider is the thing there. Shorter passing, standard tempo, be more expressive, makes sense with that many players in there. 
being more expressive, making different runs. I quite like being a bit more freedom to roam from their position. Makes sense when you've got loads of players to do that. Working the ball into the box, really not many instructions in transition. They regroup instead of counter pressing, but then counter when they win the ball. Nothing in terms of how they distribute the ball in transition. Out of possession, it's a mid block line of engagement and a higher defensive line. Similar again, I suppose. I know it was a really weird one in the last tactic we looked at, casuals, I think it was. But that slightly lower line of engagement seems to be something that works, even with a higher defensive line. This is a really intriguing, different type of tactic for me. I hope you guys enjoyed having a look at it. Let's move through to our final tactic of today's video. And that final tactic of today's video is this one here. I told you they get funky today. This is a 4-3-3 tactic submitted by Jonas or Jonas. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to go with Jonas for today, like the brothers. It is a Bayer Leverkusen 11 with Tobias in goal, Incapier, Diamande and Scalvini as the back three. That is so FM. But I absolutely love it. As somebody who has already signed Diamande and in the past has signed Scalvini about 58 times. And I love Incapier. It's a really cool... By the way, Leverkusen, just as a save, so many amazing FM players in that squad. You can go and have a lot of fun, I think, with the Bayer Leverkusen save. It then is a deep line of defensive midfielders slash wingbacks with Grimaldo to the left, Kjolmund, Stamanich and Barr. I'm looking at here. It says a KWB, which I'm assuming is a complete wingback on the right, a wingback on the left. And then in front of those, behind one striker that is a DLF, I think, we'll load it into my save and have a look at the exact roles because I think we're playing in, I'm assuming, German here. O Oversicht? Sounds German to me. You'll have to, again, correct me if I'm wrong there, Jonas or Jonas. Vert and Hoffman in behind Raspadori. Lots of instructions set on here with a balanced mentality, it seems. I want to see what does Jonas say about this tactic here. It is. And I, I can actually, I can see this here. The first line of it is something that I noticed straight away. It's a Bayer Leverkusen 3-4-3. I got some inspiration from RDF and tweaked it to match my team. Now, I saw RDF tweeted a tactic a little bit like this one, and something I saw somebody submit as well is very similar, which seems really, really effective in this year's engine. I think I could tell that this one was kind of based off that, which is, you know, you've owned it. Fair play to you. Play the game however you want, by the way. And how I wanted to play, which is interesting because Bayer Leverkusen do play with that back five in real life under Jabby Alonso at the moment, either a back three or back five, depending on how you see it. It is pretty much a, the opponent can't score. And you just have that one or two big chances a game to score some goals, which conclude in the lowest goals conceded in the Bundesliga. This is really fun because it's so different to some of the other tactics we've seen in today's video, which is more, I'm going to score more goals than you, which is probably closer to the way that I play the game. Having an actual uh, tactic that really restricts the opposition is something I, I, I kind of always just go the other way and just try and score loads of goals, which seems to be easier. This, I think, is more tricky. Got to the uh, German Cup final, qualified for the Champions League and went to the Champions League final in my second season with only two players added in Diamande and Andre. Two players that I've already signed in this year's game as well, which is fun, isn't it? And RB swapped due to release clause in Frimpong's contract. So Frimpong must have been sold and then swapped out the right back. So not too much work done in terms of transfers, just lots of really good, strong tactical stuff in here then. Let's have a look at some of the results from Jonas. I want to see uh, the programme... 45. Uh, so it says program 24 25. I want to see how did they get on against Bi uh, Bayern Munich? <coughs> Excuse me. I want to see actually how did they get on against Bayern Munich? That's always the real measure, isn't it? And how well you're doing in the Bundesliga. They've lost one of the games there. I can see 3 1. Is it just the one game against Bayern in there? Yeah, I think it is. Dortmund at the end, they've beaten though in the semi final of the cup. There's some good wins as well. 3 0 at home to Dortmund, which is always good. A win against champ in the Champions League against PSG is always impressive. 1-0 in the first leg and then 0-0 away from home. Going to show that there's two clean sheets there. That's exactly what the tactic is based upon, isn't it? I want to load this into my save now so we can have a look at some of these instructions. The 3-4-3 from Jonas. Here it is. I don't think it's going to use Ivan Tony as a centre-back, but we'll go with this. Best 11. It would look a little bit like this for me. Botman, Inacio, Diamande, Trippier, Tonali, Bruno and Barco. I mean, it fits my my 11 quite, my squad, sorry, quite nicely, actually. Anderson, Almiron in behind Isaac. I think that's maybe where it's weakest, those uh, attacking midfielders. So it is a balanced mentality. It doesn't have that Segundo Volante, which seems to be really effective in the 
engine. I wonder if you wanted to go more attacking with this, you'd maybe get the Segundo Volante rather than def the defensive midfielders. Perhaps in possession, we've got these instructions here, focusing down the flanks here from uh, from in their approach play. They've got shorter passing, slightly higher tempo, more disciplined in transition. Pretty much what we see a lot rolling out from the keeper. Though is an interesting one. And then again, it's that mid block, but this time with a standard defensive line, much deeper set this tactic. Again, going to that idea of not letting the opposition score goals, which... It seems to be effective. I mean, if you actually look at it, you can see why the opposition doesn't score many goals. That's a lot of defensive players there. Even in terms of their, their mentalities, you've got two defensive defenders and then supportive players around it. Just the one attacking one with the complete wing back from Trippier called the right wing back, which was Frimpong and then was replaced by Barr, I think it was, in, uh, in, in Jonas's save. I think it's really fun. I think hopefully... Today's video has shown you that there are other ways to play the game. I think the first video did show you that 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3s are really effective. You can be a little bit more outlandish. You can go for something different. Hopefully you want to have a go at some of these yourself. If you want to download them again, it is in the comments down below. In that pinned comment, there will be a download link to go and bring them into your game. Just to show you as well, if you want to bring these tactics into your game, go and download them. Put them into your Football Manager Tactics folder. And then from there, you will need to go to here, load, and load them in from this point here, okay? This is where, just, just a little bit of thing. I saw some people asking how you actually load them into your game. Save them into the Football Manager, Sports Interactive Football Manager 2024 Tactics folder. Save the files there, and then you'll be able to load them in your game using the load button here. Hopefully it was enjoyable today. Hopefully you want to see more of this because there are so many more of your tactics that have been submitted some really interesting ones that we could go and do in another follow-up video if you want to go and see it let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it subscribe to the channel i've not actually asked you to do that today so please do subscribe we're still aiming for 60k but most importantly have a lovely rest of your day thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one Bye bye